Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. It's a real uh, pleasure to have you along this evening um, for tonight's talk, Introduction to Rock Climbing with our friends at Glenmore Lodge. Um, tonight, we're going to be, we've really aimed this talk at anyone who's either new to climbing or trying to get back into climbing after uh, possibly a year of, of of not doing it or even if it's just been a few months um so we're delighted to be joined by Stu from Glenmore Lodge who is um the International Mountain Federation guide and Glenmore Lodge instructor and he's going to be sharing a few tips on how to get into rock climbing or how to get back into rock climbing so um thank you Stu um <clears throat> just before we start the we're on zoom and on facebook this evening so if you've got any questions and you're watching on zoom then feel free to pop them in the q a if you're watching on facebook then feel free to pop them in the comments and i'll be monitoring them throughout the evening so i'll put as many questions to Stu as i can um we've also got a slight technical issue with Stu's camera so when he's presenting you actually won't see him so we've brought him on camera now but um, it's probably not a bad thing <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just mentioned that just in case anyone thinks something's gone wrong but um yeah I'll, I'll i'll hand over to Stu and um thanks very much enjoy the talk thank you okay thanks mark uh yeah well thank you for everyone for attending and uh hope this is useful uh and i hope you're well wherever you are uh i'll just share my screen uh and hopefully yeah uh, hopefully this will work okay. Good. Uh, so yeah, I hope you're all well. Uh, right now I'm up in Aviemore and I don't know where all you guys are, but uh, I hope you're having a nice evening. Uh, and it seems to feel like summer has started again, which has been quite nice. Uh, and I've been uh, teaching rock climbing today. Uh, I work over at uh, Glenmore Lodge up here in Scotland. Uh, I've been here for a strange couple of years. <laughs> so I moved up a couple of years ago. And, uh, and then, then obviously, uh, you know, COVID happened. So it's very uh, strange year uh, last year. But things are starting to uh, improve. And it's so nice to see people and meet new people again. And it's been fun teaching rock climbing uh, the last uh, few days, uh, which is nice. So hopefully this lecture will uh, help you. Uh, we're just here to help. And uh, any questions, do fire them in whenever. But all this uh, lecture is, I'm just gonna maybe, uh, is, is focused around this, maybe just some areas that you want to uh, consider moving into uh, you know, rock climbing, whether it be for the first time, or after a while, uh, you know, uh, leaving it for a bit, or you want to come back into climbing, uh, and hopefully it'll inspire you as well to uh, to give it a go again uh, and start things back up. But also, if you're very brand new to it as well, I wanted to inspire you to, uh, to start up, and I'll give you some ideas on how to how, how to do that as well. Pretty limited uh, as it's just a, a webinar, but hopefully it gives you some notes and questions and. And that'll lead on to, uh, to things uh, where for your climbing uh, developing as well. So uh, along these pictures, uh, it's just going to be some some text as well uh, to uh, air, maybe focus on a, a certain area. Uh, and I can maybe also tell where some of the, the pictures are as well to, uh, to help you along. Uh, but I guess this talk is, is a bit of a skills checklist. Uh, but also what I mean by safe practices is, is kind of what people normally do. Uh, and these are, if these are brand new to you, then you, uh, you can go away and learn these either through a book or and I'll give you some advice on where to start all these things as well. But this is a, a big rock climb here near Thravimore uh, on a mountain called Binion Shoes. And this is uh, Avriki Wall that you can see the person climbing on there. And this is uh, quite a long route. Uh, it's about five pitches long, so five rope lengths long. And you can see it's uh, deep in the mountains. 
Uh, and for this one, you can get to it at the mountain bike as well, which is nice. So if you're brand new to this, uh, you're thinking about, you know, where do I even start? Well, for, a, you know, a very first starting point, a good starting point is climbing walls. So I don't know if there's a climb wall nearby you, uh, but often you can meet new people there or even go on a course or uh, you can maybe just register the climb wall and they'll give you some starting points. And then you can start going to the climb wall on your own or with friends. Uh, but that's a really good place for, for things to start. It might also be that you've got friends or family uh, that you can climb with uh, and they may even introduce you. That might be the case for you right now. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and that, but that, that's often nice. And uh, I had a little bit of that when I was younger, uh, but not family. It was more friends. Uh, another way to start is maybe a club. So there might be a climbing or mountaineering club nearby. And in that club, you'll get a lot of people who will look after you, but also uh, teach you uh, aspects of climbing as well. And you then will probably, that will develop into maybe lots of trips or uh, meets that the club will organise. Uh, and your climbing will hopefully develop from that point with, uh, with meeting people in the club as well. Uh, you may also decide to go down a different route, and that might be to just go into an intro, intro climbing course. And these, these will be run throughout, uh, throughout the UK, uh, obviously in the climbing areas uh, in, in the UK. It might be even in the, in the climbing wall, but if you wanted to get, you know, get stuck into climbing outside, then uh, they'll be in the climbing areas of the UK. Uh, where, where, the, where the areas, the climbing is more concentrated and uh, already well developed. So we're talking about places like North Wales, South Wales, Devon and Cornwall, uh, Peak District, Lake District. I hope I haven't may not mentioned many uh, awesome ones, but also then uh, Scotland as well. Uh, so yeah, you could, uh, and also there's, there's many people, many qualified instructors that will advertise for this as, as, as well. But obviously, if you want any advice for that, I can, we were here to give you some advice on where to go for this. It also may be an individual climbing instructor or uh, mountain guide. Uh, so these people will be off, offering something very tailored uh, and maybe individual as well. So that's, uh, there's some good ideas on where to start. Uh, now going, going forward also, you know, you may be asking, this might be your very first time and it might be just an intro to it all. And you may be actually, testing the water a little bit. Well, I'm here to reassure you that uh, anybody can go climbing, literally anybody. Uh, I think it's a great uh, life skill and skill set to have. It complements many things. And, you know, you're constantly risk assessing and meeting new people outside. It's exercise and a great adventure uh, as, as well. Um, if, if, if you're wondering, I think a good level of fitness does help. It's not absolutely important, but I think it, you, you will get more from it and you'll probably enjoy things more. So any, uh, any tips I can give you for there, just keep up your basic gym fitness, running, or any basic conditioning uh, and, and, you know, and, and you're healthy, uh, then I think you'll enjoy the climbing even more and be in a position to develop from as well. And I think the next point is really important, the sense of adventure. I'm sure we all have that. If you've signed up for this, then you've definitely definitely got that. Uh, so a good sense of adventure, yeah. And let, let me remind you as well, it's never too late. You know, I, I love teaching climbing to all ages uh, and meet people from all over the world uh, teaching climbing. So it's never too late. So it doesn't matter how old you are. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing whenever. Uh, it's, it's really good for building teamwork and friendships. Uh, I, I would say that's fairly automatic that they become you know really good friendships because you're often experiencing uh you know you know quite unique experiences uh so you have that uh, really nice connection uh you know when climbing you you often have to trust people really well but also it takes you to some really special parts of the uk and these experiences can be quite uh, vivid at times and you know it's nice to share that with people and and you've always got that to share together as well so it's very good for that. Uh, and, and like I said, you know, it can take you to some of the most amazing 
parts of the world, if not uh, the country. Uh, you know, we're very lucky in, in this picture here. Uh, this is a reef uh, over on the west coast of uh, Scotland, in the northwest of Scotland. And you can see the mountains in the background and it's a really nice little sea cliff. It's a beautiful place. So, you know, going for, so if you already uh, do a little bit of climbing wall, uh, you know, already, or it's maybe been uh, due to COVID times, it's maybe been a long time since you've been climbing and uh, you're going back out to outside rock rather than in the climbing wall, then, you know, I think the challenge is, is one of the best things about this. Uh, you know, there is more adventure than, than, than your climbing wall, obviously, and, uh, you know, and nature as well. You know, the climbing walls are great and I often use them as well, but, you know, I think if you're using the climb wall all the time, I think there's maybe that ambition to, uh, to start moving outside to go climbing as well. I would say, you know, how to do all this, how to and what to expect. Well, um, again, like I said, make, you know, one good way is to go with experienced friends or family and they can look after you. And obviously, they'll have to be, you know, climbers. You're very lucky if you have that in your family. Uh, that'd be really nice. Uh, maybe an instructor or a mountain guide. Uh, but there's also going to be other equipment that you're going to need more than maybe at the climbing wall. So you can need a simple climbing rack uh, and, and a rope as well. So, and this equipment, you can't go out and buy it, uh, buy it overnight. It can all be very expensive. So over time, I would say, you know, just generate this equipment slowly over time and that will allow you to go to different places. Uh, I would say, you know, with the equipment and borrow a bit from friends, reliable friends who are maybe climbers, uh, borrow this equipment and acquire it over time or maybe combine it with a team of friends who some people may have more equipment than others and that'll help uh, going outside. But this is all great because it's often new equipment and something good and new to learn that might be different from the climbing wall. Uh, going to a crag will involve more planning. Uh, you'll obviously have to get there. You need to know more about a crag the, uh, than a climb wall. You'll have to have a look at the weather forecast, maybe read a guidebook. And what comes with visiting different crags is all the different rock types, climbing styles and history. Uh, you know, these places have, uh, you know, in the UK, we have some of the best climbing history in the world. And, uh, and we love writing about it. So in all the climbing guidebooks, it'll give you a, uh, a general overview of the climbing history in the area, which is really nice. Also, what to expect is, you know, the, the challenge of, you know, navigating and climbing around rock and, and also the, the risk uh, that comes with that. Uh, you know, you, you assess the risk, you know, very carefully with friends and, uh, you know, a different place will have different levels of risk. And I see that's part of the challenge as well, also part of the reward you know, in, uh, in doing the job well. So, sh and share that as well with friends and, and that's something new to learn when going outside, you know, climbing outside. Uh, very different from a climbing wall is the weather. Uh, so the weather can, can often be uh, a bit of a challenge depending on where you are in the country. So, uh, you know, good luck with that. <laughs> and uh, it may involve traveling. Uh, sometimes, uh, or maybe a little bit more planning around days off and uh, and grabbing the best chance of the weather. Uh, like I said today, it's uh, it's start the weather's decided to start to go uh, a little bit more summery, so it feels a little warmer today, which has been uh, which has been really really very welcome uh, over the last uh, last few days. So, what types of climbing? Ooh, I skipped ahead. Uh, I'll just what have we got. So uh, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you know of these types of different climb, but uh, I'll try and uh, summarize or, or describe them. Bouldering is, is very popular. Uh, and that's here in this picture here, you can see. Uh, requires very little equipment. Uh, it's, it's normal for people to have a bouldering mat nowadays. Uh, and it's normally to a crag that's very small or even a set of boulders uh, that you can climb uh, comfortably uh, and it allows you maybe to focus more on the technique and uh, the the difficulty of climbing and, and 
and you can often use it for training, but also a bit of fun. Uh, the great thing about bouldering is it doesn't require much equipment and you can get a lot done in a very short amount of time. Uh, you also, you know, you can go out on, on your own uh, if it's an area you know well for a bit of a bit of fresh air and a bit of adventure. Uh, you know, I think if you're on your own, a bouldering mat would make uh, a bit more difference. I'd say a lot more people are using them as standard anyway. Uh, and these can be bought in most shops as well. So there's bouldering. And then there's trad climbing, which which is getting a lot of really good profile now. You know, it's it's it's, a, it's the most probably uh, old fashioned style of climb we've got, but it's but it's also well respected throughout the whole world. Our view on trad climbing, uh, and that is that uh, we place gear into the crag, and it means you can be very creative and inventive in make, and the challenge is more to make it safe. Uh, by putting wires and cams in and making your own belays uh, with no fixed equipment in the in the route. I would say most of the climbing in the UK is trad climbing. And then there's the sport climbing. And sport climbing, this is where the, there will be bolts in the crag. And it's probably in the UK, it's been accepted that, that crag is okay to bolt. Uh, and there'll be metal clips, metal bolts, uh, and they will provide your safety. Uh, and you'll sport climb it, just like it's in a climbing wall as well. Single pitch climbing is where all of this climbing, this can be sport climbing or track climbing, but single pitch means that it's a small crag that you can operate on the crag with, a, with you know, a rope length very, very easily. Also, normally a single pitch climbing has easy access to the top and bottom. Multi-pitch climbing well, this is where some of the biggest adventures uh, are in the UK. And this involves more than one rope length. So you'll have to stop mid-route and make a belay at a stance or somewhere uh, where you can't carry on. There'll be a natural ledge maybe, normally sometimes really good ledges, and you make a belay and repeat the process. And in the UK, some of these routes could be you know, even up to eight, nine, ten pitches, pitches long. You know, on average, you get a lot of crags that are maybe two to three pitches high uh, in the Lake District in North Wales. But also, like I said, some of the biggest adventures in the UK uh, can be a lot more than that, if not double. Uh, so you get, that's multi-pitch climbing, big adventures. You can see here, here's some images. Uh, this is... Uh, and the, the main image on the left there, that's a route called Savage Slit here in the Cairngorms. And that's a, a three pitch route, multi pitch route. Uh, and it's a granite rock type. And uh, it's here in the Cairngorms. Uh, it's, and the, the, you know, the, the grade of that is, uh, is, is VDIF severe, no, around about that. Uh, really nice multi pitch climb. And then you've got uh, top right is the Old Man of Hoy. Uh, very, you know, obviously differing seriousness levels and adventures. And I would say the old man of Hoy is probably one of the, the biggest and uh, best trad climbing adventures you can have in the UK. A sea stack up on the north of Scotland uh, in, in the Orkney Islands. And then lower down is a, is a sport climb on uh, Slate in uh, Clamberis in, in North Wales. So it's just an example of uh, different climbs in different places throughout the UK. So that here's, uh, this is all gonna be new. Uh, like I said before, uh, the equipment required and a bit of care and maintenance. Uh, do look after this. If you, if you look after this gear and, and, and carefully monitor it, you know, every time that you go out, keep a good eye on the equipment because the rock, you know, the rock and the ropes, you know, you do put them through, uh, you know, quite a lot of hard work. So, uh, you know, do keep an eye on it and constantly monitor any sort of like uh, wear and tear. Yeah. Uh, but there is quite a lot of equipment uh, to be bought or slash acquired. And with all this, uh, I would say it's quite expensive, like I said, to buy it all in one. So, you know, I would acquire it over time. Uh, and what will happen is you'll, you'll see where you want to go next or, and you'll think, oh, we need this piece of equipment. 
Well, that's fine. Then that means it allows you to maybe visit somewhere else. Uh, so you, you, you buy it over time uh, and when you can afford it. But, you know, obviously you're going to need a helmet and harness and rock shoes and chalk bag. So you are, you can build on, uh, you can build on what you already have maybe for the climbing wall, for example, and the rope is, you know, so the rope that you go through the climbing wall with, you can use uh, at a crag as well. Slightly different, you're going to need a small climbing rack. Uh, now this is going to be dependent on the place that you want to go climbing or where, wherever is more local or somewhere that you particularly want to climb for the first time. Your climbing rock, rack often has to suit uh, where, you're, where you're starting out climbing. Um, but there is an average rack that you, that you can uh, start with. Uh, and you, you know you can get lots of advice on this. You know it's going to be a set of wires, uh, you know one to ten, and then a few cams, some quick draws, uh, and then maybe some hexes and some slings, some one twenty slings and some screw gates. Now, you know, with with that you could climb most things uh, on small single pitch crags, and then in time you'll you'll learn a little bit more about what equipment is needed in in different places. Uh, like I said, it will last a long time and check it, check it regularly. Yeah, because uh, different rock types can uh, really uh, affect the, the equipment a bit, bit more. You know, so slate, for example, has sharp edges. Granite here in, in, in Scotland has uh, quite a lot of crystals. So you've got to watch out for the rope uh, and so on and so on. If you're climbing by the sea, uh, you know, nearly all the time, then do maybe wash and rinse your gear, just a simple uh, wash and rinse in the bath uh, with no, no, just clean water uh, will, be, will be enough. But that mean, that I would say that if that is the only place you climb. So for example, Pembroke in South Wales, if you are climbing there all the time, even just the, uh, you know, the wind, wind off the sea will be enough for you to maybe do this uh, uh, quite regularly. Yeah, just to keep good care of your equipment. Climbing partners, uh, this is the best bit because <laughs> uh, these people really make it. These are your friends. Uh, I would say get some advice on this is, first of all, pick uh, people that you like being with in the mountains and climbing. Yeah. Uh, and that might be not because they know lots about climbing, it's just that you have fun with them and you like being with them. And, uh, but it might also be that they're a really good climber and a role model. And, uh, and you feel safe with them. Yeah. But another way of looking at it as well is if both of you know very little, you can learn together as well, which is a nice, a nice thing. Similar ambitions is often nice. Uh, you like going to the same places uh, and uh, want to climb the same routes. And you know, like I said, learning from each other and learning together is, is a brilliant way. You know, and often this can be done reflecting you know, after you climb, consider how well you did, what could have been done better. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a really, really good process. Uh, and it goes without saying that, you know, that you trust these people that you're climbing with uh, and those people are honest as well. And what I mean by that is that they're quite uh, good at sharing how they feel and, uh, and what they're thinking, which is nice. Uh, and yes, safe and reliable. So, that, you know, be selective with these, you know, and do go with people that you do feel safe, uh, safe with. Uh, now, this doesn't happen overnight. Uh, like I say on the slide there, this can take time. So, uh, so don't, don't rush it and uh, start, start on small climbs and then get, slowly get bigger and bigger when, you, when you're ready to do this together. Yeah. Uh, this was quite an issue uh, and, and maybe still is as well. You know, I'm back to work and, uh, and I'm starting to uh, sometimes remember things slowly, uh, you know, get, ooh, and then kind of like, cut, uh, I sometimes forget, uh, not obviously not when I'm climbing, but just going back to work after a while, you do forget the, the, the little things, the normal things. So, you know, I understand this. For me, I'm quite lucky, you know, I get to climb most of the time. So that, you know, that, that's really nice. But, but I think when we've taken a step out of doing something for a very long time, it does take time to get back into it. Uh, you know, so just 
be aware of this yourself and maybe for others as well. Keep an eye on each other. And through being aware of this, then what advice I can give you is just start slowly. And, you know, start on easy climbs, but aim to do them well. I often find that's a, a very good way for me to start the season. I'll go on a climb that I maybe know really, really well, uh, but I'll aim to do it in a good style. Uh, so that's my way of starting out, going to a place that I've, that I've climbed already before. At. Another way is looking after each other, a bit of teamwork uh, and understanding uh, each other's strengths and weaknesses. You know, we all have good and bad days uh, and, you know, this might be uh, one of those times as well. So uh, help each other out with a bit of teamwork around this. And maybe uh, set a bit of a time scale to this, a timeline, uh, you know, maybe, you know, without making too big a plans too soon. Yeah, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I would give this some time and, and maybe allow a bit of practice lead up time to some of the bigger adventures. And a good reminder throughout all of this as well, it's, you know, have fun along the way all the time. Yeah. So maybe plan in some smaller cliffs. Uh, like the one in the image there, just to get warmed up and get back into it before bigger routes. So when you when you go in out, uh, you know, climbing, it's going to be important uh, that you well know where to go. You know, uh, I would I would say this is all down to venue choice. Uh, it might be that it's a venue closest to you, and that's great. This venue, any advice I can give you, this venue might have a guidebook for it. You can find this all online. Just, you need to uh, just Google the area and you'll probably pop up on a website of some sort or uh, sometimes uh, a website uh, called uh, UK Climbing. You might pop up on that and that'll give you a very good index of the climbs and the crags uh, in your area. Yeah, so that's... That's always uh, a good good thing to look for. But you'll nearly always come across that uh, that website uh, when googling something. Depends how far you do want to travel. Uh, you know, maybe in an area where you're very very lucky, for example, like the Peak District, uh, you might be in the Highlands of Scotland. Uh, never to be where you do have to travel a bit, but you've got lots of choice. So it's up to you. Uh, you know how far you want to travel. Also, depending on where you want to climb, you need to, whether it's going to be single or multi-pitch, that's up to you uh, and what you decide to do. Uh, I would say, for example, starting out, I would go single pitch. Uh, again, if you're in a place like Peak District, uh, then there's single pitch everywhere. So you, you may in time actually feel that you want a bit of a longer climb somewhere, like in North Wales, yeah, or Devon and Cornwall, for example. Yeah, so, so there's, wherever you go, there's, it's going to be up to you what sort of thing you're after, what sort of style of climbing you're after. Yeah. So all these, uh, they will have guide climbing guidebooks for the areas. Uh, and climbing guidebooks are getting better and better uh, every day. So, you know, so I would just keep your eye out online or in shops uh, and, you know, pick up a guidebook and the one that you like reading or the one that makes climbing look really, really good get that one and, and use that one. I think the ones with tough photo toppers and uh, good route descriptions combined with those, they're, they're the best ones to look out for. Um, other ideas you can get for, for where you're gonna climb are things like uh, articles or even some coffee table books. And um, they can maybe give you some, some ideas on, in places to climb in the UK. Uh, word of mouth as well. So you might you know hear this from a friend wherever they're going climbing, or you've heard about it chatting uh, in, a, in a group or the club that you're at or the climbing wall. Uh, and then you can look this place up and do a bit of research. Just, uh, you know, uh, maybe it might be very, very interesting for, for people, but each venue might be a different rock type. Uh, just be aware that that rock type will climb slightly different uh, to a place that you might be used to. Again, I think that's one of the, the, the beauties of rock climbing is that the rock type can change the style of climbing required. And also the gear can be uh, slightly different as well. So this it all adds a bit of variety to our climbing, which is, which is really nice and fun. 
So here's a few images of uh, different places and, and rock climbing. So uh, uh, the, the main image here is on, uh, is on Sky, uh, a really interesting sea cliff uh, called Kilt Rock with lots of vertical col columns that you can climb. And uh, this route's called Grey Panther, a real classic there. And uh, the top, uh, top right image is uh, Stack Polly in Scotland, a uh, really nice rock to climb, really, really, really beautiful uh, place to go and outstanding views. And then the bottom right is, is the is Clamberry Slate. Yeah, so that, again, very accessible. Uh, and again, a really cool rock type to climb. It's very, very different from anything else, which when all these different rock types make for, makes for adventure, but also fun and a little bit of, uh, uh, kind of like challenge uh, along with it as well. Just a little word on on access. Uh, you know, this is really important. It's, I think it's important that we uh, that we respect this as well. Uh, all of these climbing areas will probably have some sort of access uh, already agreed, uh, but just double check this and make sure. Uh, I think most of the main popular climbing areas in the UK, it's all been agreed. Either this is by uh, access throughout Scotland or uh, the BMC uh, for England and Wales will have already uh, agreed some sort of access and advertised and any issues uh, have normally been, normally been uh, sorted out for us. Uh, but it's still always, if you're unsure, it's always good to ask. So you can look at this in the guidebook or online as well. Yeah. There may be some local restrictions, so just look out for these. That might be a signpost somewhere, but again, do respect that. It might be because there's birds nesting or some sort of uh, temporary closure uh, in that area. Yeah, uh, yeah. be respectful and uh, considerate for others at the crag as well. Uh, and I think it's a really good, a good habit. And, uh, you know, I think, I think it also makes for a really nice environment for other climbers. Uh, uh, to constantly visit and feel feel like it's a nice happy place to to go climbing yeah a, a little tip is you know you uh, look after the places that we go climbing so you know maybe aim to improve uh, not just uh, leave it as you found it but if if there's any way that the area that you climb in it can be improved then then even better you know conserve that area you know for climbing for the future for everybody uh, look out for other climbers and just be be respectful and aware of other climbers at the crag uh, and, and and how equally they are there for a nice uh, adventurous time climbing in nature uh, just just like yourselves yeah it's always nice to say hello as well and uh, and be polite uh, and have a little chat with the climbers because often uh, especially nowadays it's really nice to see other people outside in the mountains so uh, so do say hello to each other as well it's, it's a really nice thing to do. All of this is kind of what, what we call crag etiquette. Uh, so that all comes underneath this little subheading. Uh, we're ult ultimately, we're aiming for minimal impacts as regards to, uh, to how, how we use these areas. Okay, rope systems, you're going to need to practice these. And all of these, again, this doesn't happen overnight different rope systems you can read books about these and uh, practice in the front room practice in the garden uh, and practice with your climbing friend as well uh, but it's all it's also good just to get used to a couple of rope systems that you know well and that can work in most places the top rope is a bit like what you would see already set up at the climbing wall uh, and this is where you know or in this image here where that person's already climbing uh, be laid at the top and the, the, the second is, is climbing up. This, this system needs to, you need to get used to this if you're looking to progress onto lead climbing, where you've already made an anchor at the top uh, and you're bringing your friend up with the rope. Because this is the system that you would need to set up uh, if you were lead climbing. The bottom rope is like what you would see at a climbing wall, where you're all be laying at the bottom of the climb, you know, and the rope's going through a belay at the top. Yeah, so that's a bottom rope. Again, that does need a different rope system to, to, to be set up as well. Now, all of these need really good anchor and 
placements and judgment of those anchors as well. Take time to learn about these and understand what makes a good uh, belay and, 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 and a less so good belay and how to make it better as well. Yeah, so take time to learn that and respect it and judge the, your equipment when you've placed it in the, in the, in the rock. Yeah, practice uh, the rope systems in safe places. And, uh, you know, again, go to smaller venues first, venues that you feel a lot more comfortable at. Yeah, and, and the books, reference books can help with this and things online as well. Yeah, the, the, the gear placements can, this all can be practiced uh, at the crag in a safe place, maybe at, the, maybe at the top, but it can also be practiced at the bottom of the crag, especially uh, if it's a safe area with, uh, you know, not underneath any climbers as well, but that can be a good way to place gear and just have a little practice anyway, to start off with. Uh, and all this time as well, uh, you know, constantly reflect and, and, and judge what you're doing, you know, challenge yourself as well. And, uh, you know, and, and this is how we learn as well. So, you know, take time to practice this. You can see here some images of people already uh, beeline at the top of the crag. So in the main image, this uh, is, uh, is it Tramadak? And uh, this climber has been set up and you can see that he's connected to two, two, uh, two anchor there, two anchor belays. Yeah, and he's bringing up his, uh, his climbing partner. And that's in North Wales, Tramadak. And then again, the top right is uh, coincidentally Tramadak as well. So you can see somebody there beeline at the top and bringing up the, the second as well. And then uh, this person in the bottom right, they're setting up a, a bottom rope system. So you can see him practicing there with the ropes and uh, equalizing the system. That's what he's about to do there by putting a knot in the rope. Good, uh, now, so lead climbing, I would say lead climbing is probably the purest form of climbing uh, that we all practice and focus uh, towards, yeah. What this means is that you are, as you are climbing, you are placing gear uh, and, and you are judging that gear and the challenge is to make it safe. Uh, what I'd recommend with this is starting on easy things first. And this, these might be things you've climbed on a safe top rope to start off with as well, yeah. And, but focus on the technical aspects uh, of placing gear. Um, yeah, focus on the technical aspects of placing gear rather than the difficulty of the climbing. Yeah, so maybe start on easy, cl easy climbs first and can concentrate on doing a good, safe job. And that might help give you the confidence of your, uh, confidence of your climbing as well. Yeah. I've just had a, a question come in uh, from Facebook. Uh, so, so there's a, someone who's looking to progress from qualifications RCI to MCI. Uh, yeah, uh, any tips? Okay, okay, yeah, we, we can answer that. I would, uh, yeah, I would say, so the other question about coming in from one person who's going from RCI to MCI, uh, it's a big step. Uh, I would say, uh, because you, you need to have your uh, ML, mountain leader, and then from that mountain leader, which, which takes a little while, uh, from that mountain leader, you need to do lots of multi-pitch climb because RCI is mainly around single pitch. So uh, towards the MCI, you need to collect at least 20, uh, 20 multi-pitch routes before you can go into your uh, MCI. And some of those uh, uh, have to be at VS. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, that, that's, it's a big step, but, it, but the MCI is quite a big qualification as well and allows you can do, to, to do many things, all aspects of mountaineering. So uh, good luck and, uh, and have fun doing that. And, and, uh, and I, hope, I hope you have a great time doing it as well because it's an amazing pathway and, uh, and a superb career step as well. So, uh, Look forward to, to seeing you. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Uh, good. So back to lead climbing on single pitch. Uh, you know, I think lead climbing also, you have to have an understanding of the risk. 
uh, and uh, involved. And, and this is why we place runners as we climb, but also not just the risk, but you're looking after your second as well. Don't worry, all of this can be fun. This is why we want to go climbing. But uh, I think we do in the background risk assess a lot of the time when we're when we're rock climbing. It will help if you understand climbing grades. So that could have been done uh, right from the very start, just to ensure that you know what you're climbing and the fact that you're not climbing something that might be too hard for yourself. Uh, so start on a grade or on a climb that is good for the grade and make sure it is that climb as well. So you're not climbing on a different route by mistake, for example. So uh, understanding the grades will help that. Make sure that you don't get on something too hard <laughs> too soon, yeah. Um, it will help if you're climbing well. And what I mean by that is you've got good, good technique, you're feeling strong, you're feeling fit. Uh, and that means that you'll enjoy the climbing and you can concentrate on uh, placing the gear. Yeah, so climbing well. Uh, is, is one of the biggest aspects actually, uh, probably slightly more than understanding how to place kit. If you're climbing well, uh, I think uh, that's a really, really good place to start. Yeah. Uh, and then combined with that is belay making. You're gonna have to make a belay at the top of your climb. This is, uh, I would say practice this to get to a stage where you can do this unprompted uh, for lead climbing and going into lead climbing. And risk assessment, I don't want to make it sound, uh, sound, sound like it's too big a thing, but I think you're just looking after each other uh, and the people around you, but also just mainly your second uh, and yourself. Uh, and, and asking the what ifs, we're, we're very good at that as climbers. And, and, uh, and then either preventing the what ifs or uh, uh, protecting, them, protecting them somehow and, and put lots of gear in if you get scared. That's uh, one little tip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, combined with lead climbing as well, is you will probably at some point want to learn how to abseil. Uh, this, is quite a, this is quite a good technique for a climber to know, uh, not just from getting around, but also you, you may be able to retrieve some gear that has been stuck, or it might be access to a certain climb. You have to abseil. Uh, but it also is a very useful thing to, to know how to do, but also to feel comfortable with it as well. We don't do lots of it as climbers, but it's, uh, but it's a really good, uh, simple and important technique. Uh, and employ safety measures as well by using a Prusik. Uh, and this can, uh, can again, safeguard uh, the abseiling technique uh, and, and make it feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah. Good. Lead climbing multi-pitch, uh, I would say, you know, uh, on the previous slide was uh, the, the textbook, uh, sorry, single pitch crag Stanage in uh, the Peak District. And then this is uh, Adveriki Wall in, uh, in Scotland. Going into any advice I can give going into multi-pitch, Go and do a climb that you really want to do, <laughs> the, that you that you feel inspired and motivated to do. But make sure you're doing it at the right time and not too early. So I would say lots of single pitch climbing will help, not just by making belays, but also that your climbing, your route finding is, is on form uh, and you're feeling confident. And you can do this at a very local, smaller place, closer to home maybe, or easy access or somewhere that you know well. And then go on the multi-pitch climb that you really want to do but at the right time. Yeah. Because it is going to employ a lot of route finding skills and also B layer construction on often really small ledges. Uh, so you have to be able to make a B lay uh, mid route. Now, what comes with that as well is managing that stance and also the rope. So, you know, this, depending on, I would aim for big ledges or, uh, you know, reasonable ledges to start off with. And any tips I can give on route finding is I would look for ledges almost first. Yeah, so keep an eye out for ledges on the route uh, and consider those. The, the guidebook will normally tell you and describe or even point out on a photo where the belay should be or where it normally is. Yeah, but at those stances, you are going to have to sort the rope out. Uh, and organizing it in a very structured manner. So do practice that. 
you know, so that your rope work's not slowing you down or making it feel really difficult. Now, on top of all that, it depends on how long your climb is uh, and is also how long it's going to take. So a bit of time management is really quite important. Any tips I can give on this is do, you know, you know do jobs well and do them once. So things are well practiced, for example, help each other out with route finding and also, you know, uh, gear changeovers at stances. Not fast, but they're done well and done once. Yeah, so nice and, nice and smooth. Yeah, try not to rush things because you often make mistakes rushing uh, and, uh, and have a really fun time along the way as well. Yeah, so take in the views and, and uh, take lots of photos and uh, have a nice time. No, all of this on top of all this, you know, you, you know, placing gear, the risk assessment, uh, all of this can made be can be made so much easier by good climbing uh, technique and strength and efficiency and uh, and confidence as well. Yeah, because with good climbing movement, this can be practiced uh, bouldering or at the climbing wall or just general good conditioning at home. But it can improve your efficiency. You can move better. You can feel stronger. You know, and uh, you, you perform a lot, a lot better. So keep your cardio training up. And if you got, like going into the mountains, keep scrambling uh, and keep doing those ridges. And that will help with all of your climbing and judgment as well. And all of this will, be import, uh, will help you progress uh, into the next grade or where, whatever climb you want to do or next big adventures. Yeah. Some different rock types will uh, require different techniques. Uh, for example, uh, you know, on gritstone, you'll do a lot of jamming. On slate climbing, you'll climb on a lot of sharp edges uh, and, and require very, very good balance. Whereas limestone is often quite strenuous uh, and very technical. So that's, again, part of the, you know, the, the beauty of all of this is the fact that you get so much variety but uh, it does require different strengths and, uh, and techniques, which, you, which, is, which is a great thing. Any tips that also you, uh, that I can give you is uh, watch other climbers and maybe, and maybe learn from others as well. Uh, and, 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 and friends as well, you know, really good role models. But keep up the good, simple strength and conditioning at home. Yeah. Good. Right, so thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, I've just had some questions come in, uh, and I uh, hope you hope you did enjoy that talk, and hopefully it was useful. Uh, just just by the way, this is on Bosigran uh, Commando Ridge in uh, in North North Cornwall. Uh, uh, so yeah, you'll, that's an amazing place to go climbing. It's it's beautiful. So I've had a, a question from uh, Kate. Uh, thanks, thanks very much, by the way, everybody, for your really nice questions. Uh, do I need, do you need to be a, a member of a club association for insurance to climb in certain places, both in the UK? Uh, uh, do you need to be a member of the club? That's insurance. Uh, so for insurance to climb. No, no, you don't need to. No, you can, you can, no, you don't need to be in a club. Uh, I think if you want insurance for your climb, any tip I can give you, you don't have to be in a club to go climbing. Uh, you don't really need to be uh, associated with, with anything really. Uh, you know, you, it can be just a group of friends. Uh, depends what you mean by insurance. If you're a member of the BMC, you can, you do get third party insurance by being a member of the BMC automatically. So that's one good one good uh, reason to be to be a member of the BMC, but other than that, uh, you know, personal insurance that can that has to be bought uh, if you are looking looking for insurance. Uh, and as far as you don't need insurance for rescue here in the UK, uh, but if you wanted to go down that route, you can get climbing insurance through the BMC and some other companies as well. So uh, hopefully that helps answer your question. Uh, Okay, and, and then I've had another question from uh, Chris on Facebook. Uh, when abseiling, do you attach the prusset to your leg strap? Yes, yes, I do, yeah. That can be a really simple, uh, efficient way of uh, attaching the prusset. Uh, the only small risk with that is 
you don't want the prusik too close to the belay device when abseiling. Uh, and often with the leg loop attachment, it can come quite close. So what you can do is extend the uh, abseil belay device with a sling from from your uh, from your belay loop. Yeah. So uh, so hopefully that helps. Uh, but there's a lot of information on on that on online and in books. But yeah, I do use the leg loop. It's a very comfortable place to uh, to have the, the prusik attached. By the way, some people do use the belay loop to clip the prusik into, uh, but that is essential, absolutely essential, that you need to extend the uh, the uh, belay abseil device with a sling because uh, the two wouldn't fit in the belay loop together. <laughs> yeah, good. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Nicole is asking about beginner courses. Are they available at Glenmore? Are they day or week long courses? Well, you can have a look on their website. It's really nice. Uh, uh, and that'll give you a full range of the rock climbing courses. Uh, there's a lot of rock climbing courses that are just two days uh, weekends uh, and also five day Monday to Friday rock climbing courses. And also, for example, uh, today I'm on a three day rock climbing course from Wednesday to Friday. So uh, full range, Nicole. Uh, uh, of, of lengths of courses and uh, times of the week. So hopefully that helps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stu. <clears throat> okay, well, um, I'll come back out and, and pop back into, uh, into Zoom. There we go. Great talk. Thank you, Stu. Uh, that's Thanks, um, everyone's, everyone's kind of asked their questions, um, but if anyone has any more please fire away. But um, I just wanted to say before we, we close up that Stu managed to cram in a lot of information in uh, yeah. space of, of 50 minutes. It was brilliant. And if any of you want to watch it again um, or get any of your friends to watch it, then it is on Facebook. It's been recorded and we'll have it on our YouTube, Ellis Brigham YouTube channel tomorrow as well. So um, you can I can't, I, like you say, Mark, I think it is quite a lot there. I kind of aim to maybe scrape on the surface of most things. So hopefully it's helped everyone and uh, inspired folks to to get out and learn more. Yeah, I think it was fantastic. Yeah, no, just there's one or two people saying they couldn't couldn't stay till the end, but they were, um, yeah, their heads were full of loads of information, so they yeah. wanted to revisit it. So I just thought I'd throw throw out that the recording will be available. Um, Thank you tomorrow. So, uh, but I think that that's it, Stu. I mean, um, people have been asking questions as we've been going through and. Uh, Really appreciate your time this evening, and um, yeah, enjoy enjoy the rest, well, enjoy the sunshine, and uh, yeah, thank you, call. and thank you to everyone as well for attending, and I hope we get to meet one day, uh, climbing or, or wherever. So uh, thanks very much, guys. Yeah, brilliant, and do do check out Glenmore Lodge's courses because they have got um, hundreds of courses, and you'll never regret doing a course up at Glenmore Lodge. Believe me, they're, they're fantastic, and the instructors are all brilliant. So. Uh, Oh, thank you. Thanks, thank Mark. You. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.